Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs and welcome to week four of my Christmas, 12 weeks of Christmas series. Um, for this card, I actually had a lot of fun. So I'll show you the cards so you can kind of check it out. And there's a lot of kind of subtle detail in this one behind the Santa Claus. Um, this is the stamp timber exclusive for Tim Hortons. So this was a fun card to make and I think that it came together beautifully. So let's check it out. So I started making this card by cutting down my cardstock as I like to do. And I did give this a black mat just because I do kind of like that look. So I did trim this down to be about an eighth of an inch smaller than my A2 base. And I am gonna cut down a piece of Distress Watercolor cardstock to be about an eighth of an inch smaller than my black mat. So it gives me a nice thin layer for each layer of this card. And I am gonna save the excess dark cardstock so that I can actually stamp out my sentiment on it as well. So I wanted to create kind of an interesting look in the background. And honestly, at this, there's too much water on this now. And you're gonna see that. Like here, I'm gonna bring in my microfiber towel and kind of just try to stamp off a bit of that water. And we're gonna cover a little bit of that stamp up just because it was very, very wet. I just, I misted it with too much water. I wanted there to be like a little bit of a watercolor look, but that was a bit more than I kind of intended for. And this is the presence out of that same Tim Holtz stamp set that is from the uh, 2023 Stamp Timber set with Simon Says Stamp. I got the matching dies as well. Uh, and I'll talk to the, you guys a little bit about those in here in a minute. But I decided I wanted to bring Lost Shadow in. And I used this kind of present stamp because I thought it was really fitting to go behind Santa Claus. Um, because, you know, he brings gifts. So I, I figured it was kind of fitting. And I'm just kind of creating my own pattern paper, really. Like that's what I'm trying to do here is just kind of create like subtle interest in the background. That's why I chose Lost Shadow because it's such a, sh a like a silvery, subtle gray. And I thought that it was just really pretty for this. And then of course I did had to add some uh, perfect pearls to my background just because it's just always so stunning and adds a little bit of shine and then I'm going to use my distress watercolor pencils I think that I've only used these once or twice and that's a shame because they're a lot of fun I just I, I don't know I struggle with watercolor a little bit so I don't tend to use them as much as I should so here for extra control I am going to use the detail water brush to kind of bring the color in. So you can see that I'm like lightly taking the color from the pencil and then using my water brush to kind of move it around on the design. Uh, and I did stamp out the Santa Claus stamp in Versa Mark, no, VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, which is waterproof. And I did lightly heat set it just to be safe before I brought in the colors. Um, I didn't show that because it's, I'm telling you about it, so you didn't need to see it. Uh, but I did do that just to be safe. I don't think you need to heat set this ink, but I tend to find that my ink pad is quite juicy. So this was just an easier way for me to make sure that I wasn't going to smear the black lines. And then I kind of went in and laid down my darkest color where I wanted the shadows to be and then I kind of work out from there honestly there's no real rhyme or reason for this this is just because I thought it would look pretty um, and I don't remember the exact colors so I'll try to guess I didn't write them down because I don't know why but uh, I black soot was the first color I used I'm pretty much positive this is candy dapple um, and I just kind of I'm working you can see like darkest I I tend to put my shadows on the left hand side that's kind of what I like to do just because I feel feel like I like to have my um, kind of color my, or my light source coming from the right top uh, but you don't need to worry about that honestly just pick one side and add all your shadows there I don't generally get really concerned with it I tend to try to just make sure that there's dimension and interest and add shadows where something sits on top of something else so you know, like the arm is over top of the bag. So I would try to add more shadowing where the arm is, like behind the arm. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. But honestly, I wouldn't worry about it. If that's not something that you are comfortable doing, don't. Just color the image. It's going to look stunning regardless. You know, if you have a little bit of a light area and a little bit of a dark area, you're going to get some really cool 
definition in your colors and it's going to look neat. So don't worry about it too much. Just kind of, you know, have fun with it and enjoy the process because that's kind of more the point than anything else. So that's kind of my, my thoughts on that. But I mean, completely up to you about how you want to color it. I chose to bring in the Distress pencil crowns, just or sorry, water pencils, because I hadn't used them in a, quite a while. So I wanted to use them, especially on a Tim Holtz stamp. I just think this is a fun way to color something. Uh, and I believe this is frayed burlap. Um, I honestly, I'm so sorry, guys. I don't remember the exact colors I used, so I, I do kind of have to guess. Uh, and I do... I have all three sets. There's three sets of the pencils. I own all three. So I'm just kind of pulling colors from whichever set of pencils I want to work with. It's more so the color than, you know, any specific anything else. Um, I did kind of try to go a, a lot more uh, traditional in my color palette for this, just because I kind of try to mix it up. And the next project you guys are going to see, so next Monday's project, is very non-traditional. So it's kind of funny when I, I like to mix both in, just because I know that everybody kind of has a different appreciation for different colors. Some people love traditional, some people love non-traditional. Either way, this is more about giving you ideas how to use your products than specific color palettes. Although, don't get me wrong, you can use the exact same color palette as I did if you want to. By all means, go for it. But um, on the off chance that you know you you know you prefer a non color or a non traditional color palette, paint give him a black suit, make him look you know Halloweeny. Like this doesn't have to be Christmassy. So completely up to you as to what you want to do. I just am showing you the pal color palette that I chose, and in this case, it was a more traditional color palette. And I'm pretty sure for his skin tone, I used tattered rose, I believe, and then a little bit of candied apple on his cheeks just to give that more rosy effect. And I did do that while he was still wet, like the face, um, so that the, the cheeks would kind of blend in a little bit. For the little patches, I'm pretty much positive that Seedless Preserves and I believe the blue is either Mermaid Lagoon or Peacock Feathers, whichever one's actually in the set. Um, I don't have the sets in front of me, so I can't tell you, but it's one of those two. And I just thought those patches could be a little bit of a different color for a little bit of fun, just because I thought it'd be kind of interesting. Now I am going to bring in white because in the one set, you get both black soot and picket fence, which is black and white. Um, you're not really going to be able to see it, but it adds some texture because I'm trying to kind of um, like dot it on a bit. You'll see it here in a second in the beard because I am going to come back and actually add just a touch, I believe, of hickory smoke. I think that's what I add. And I added that into the beard just to give it a little more dimension so that there could be shadows. So you'll see it here in a second when I do actually add the hickory smoke that there is just a touch of shadowing in his beard. And it's already wet at this point because I did bring in the white pencil to kind of just add some texture and interest. Um, so when I bring in the gray, you'll be able to see it move a little bit with the uh, white already being there because there's a little bit of water. So you see, I'm just trying to kind of add a little bit of shadowing, like right behind his arm, a little bit under his, his mouth, his nose, that kind of stuff. Not under his mouth, sorry, his mouth is in his beard. But hopefully that kind of makes sense. Like it's just honestly to add a little bit of interest. Um, it's not to make his beard look gray. It's just to add a little bit of shadowing. So be very careful with your die cuts. I actually cut my finger open here. You're not going to see it. Luckily, I um, I caught it and it didn't really bleed on the project. But I, I trimmed off my, you can see my little snippers there to the right hand corner. And I cut my, you know, my dies apart because when Simon, they come from Simon, they are attached. So I cut them apart and there was just this one little nub on the die and I cut my finger open with it. So just be careful. Um, I will have to go and sand them down a little bit. But, you know, it, it's hard because it, it makes dyes a little less expensive when they don't come pre-cut. So it's one of those things where it's like, do you ask for them to be pre-cut and pay a little more? Or do you cut them yourselves and then just, you know, pay a little less and be a little more careful? Like, it's one of those things where it's always a little hard to judge what the best outcome is. But I did manage to cut myself. So just be careful and be aware of that and just uh, file them down a little bit so that they're not sticking out like that. And then I did bring in a sentiment from that same stamp set and I just white heat embossed it on the black cardstock that I have matting this image. And this was mostly because I wanted to be able to ground my Santa Claus. I want him standing on something. I don't want him just floating in the background because though you can, 
Obviously, anytime I tell you you can or can't do anything, that's not true. You can do anything you like. However, to have a more grounded looking design, have something standing on something. Does that kind of make sense? Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. So I don't want my Santa Claus to just be floating. I want him to stand on the sentiment so that it looks like he's grounded in the image. That's why I did it this way. You don't have to do that. Completely up to you. But it does kind of help the image make more sense. But I mean, there's no wrong way to make a card. If you're having fun and it makes you smile, at the end of the day, that is really all that matters, you know, but because I'm showing you guys why I'm doing the things that I'm doing, I do kind of try to explain the reasoning behind some things so that it makes sense to you guys later. So you're not just like, well, why did you do it that way? You know, like, so it makes sense. So I do have Santa Claus standing on my sentiment and I did intentionally give it just that little bit of interest by cutting the end in an angle. You don't have to do that. It could be a label. This just makes it a little more interesting. And I did glue it down with my Nouveau Deluxe glue and I am going to trim off the leftover just with my trimmer. You can cut it with scissors. This is my trimmer was just sitting there. So it was easy to grab. Um, but this kind of gives you that finished look. And then he is going to be popped up with some foam tape. I did choose to bring in a little bit of foam tape to put behind Santa just so he could have a little more dimension and stand a little bit more away from the design. This is a fairly simple card for me, especially compared to what you guys are going to see next week. Honestly, next week, like the Monday video, I think that I literally put everything in the kitchen sink on those designs. Like you're going to see this week, like this is a fairly clean and simple card for me. Next week's ex exact opposite. There is everything in those designs. Like they are just a bit over the top, but they are so fun. So I hope you guys are excited to see them. But I did add just a little bit of the Simon Says Stamp Big Mama foam tape behind my Santa. And that foam tape is super thin, which is awesome because it gives you a little bit of height without adding a whole bunch of bulk. So it is by far my favorite like foam tape. Um, there, there is other brands. Obviously, there's tons of brands out in the market. And the only other one I have is the 3M one. And it's just, it's so expensive for me to get in Canada. So I do tend towards the Big Mama foam tape just because it's less expensive than me trying to find that 3M one. And I think they also changed the formula of that one. I don't think it's as, as sticky as it used to be, but this is just my preference. Again, totally up to you. And I am going to add a few extras to this design because you guys know that I can't leave it alone. Like I have to add extras. So I brought in my Spectrum Noir glitter pen. It's just clear glitter. It's just going to add a little bit of shimmer and shine all over the design. I have my paper towel back out because this is water-based. So it will try to shift the color. So just be aware of that when you're using it. You could watercolor with it if you wanted to. Like you could pick up color with it and then you just have a super sparkly design but I chose to kind of just add it in a couple of areas where I really wanted it. So I did Santa's suit and hat and then the patches on the bag because I thought that was super cute. And then for a little bit of an extra highlight in the lighter areas, I did bring in my white gel pen. And if you find it's not, the ball's not rolling well in it, roll it on your finger. I find that the heat from my hand will warm up the ball if it's a little bit stuck. And then that kind of helps it shift around and then get the ink to flow. Uh, at least that's what I have noticed. I mean, every ink pen could be different you'd have to try with yours but I have found that works really well with mine and then for a little extra shimmer and shine I did bring in my trinity stamp it's star embellishments I am in love with these and I just thought that it really added a bit of a magical feel like they're kind of just sparkling around Santa Claus they don't you know that's their purpose they're just making him look more magical because it's a very magical idea and it's kind of very sweet so I'm going to hold that card up for you guys and check it out. I hope you enjoy it. Leave me a like, leave me a comment, consider subscribing, and let me know what you think of this card. It is a bit simple, but I think that it turned out really pretty and a lot of fun um, for a more simple card design for me. But that is what I have for you guys this week. And make sure you check back in on Monday of next week to check out the crazy project that I made because it is very over the top. Thank you so much, guys, and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.